Hi, I'm Claire and this is my husband Nick. We met in an online chat room in 2001 and ended up getting married in 2006. We're a fairly normal, hard-working couple. We love travelling and enjoying a drink or two. In early 2020, we decided we wanted a whole new life change and challenge. So we said goodbye to our jobs. We sold our Wiltshire farmhouse. We packed up our things and made the move to France. In early 2001, I went back to the UK to finalise our house sale and pick up my Arga. I was on Facebook on an Escape to the Chateau fan club page when I saw this advert. I messaged Nick the advert. Curiosity got the better of him and he went and arranged a viewing. With the instructions from me, just your judgment if you think i'll like it put in an offer the offer was accepted and we finally got the keys on the 10th of june 2021 join us and our dogs Merlo and flora as we renovate our mason demetra it's a sunday morning i'm on my way to work oh the hunt's out um it's about minus one if not lower and I'm just driving really slowly because there's this thick pea soup like fog I tell you what I really wouldn't really want to be out hunting in this yeah driving along and it's now just gone down to minus two I get the impression that they don't quit the roads around here um, it is just really, really white and frosty. I'm just gonna take it nice and steady. Flora, Merlo. Mm -hmm. Now we need to have a chat. Nana and Grandpa Butcher are coming. And you need to be on your best behaviour. Best behaviour includes no jumping up. No weeing randomly round the house. Flora, no indoor poos of any kind. Especially behind the sofa where we think we won't find them. And just generally acceptably good dog behaviour. Merlo, Nana doesn't want to play slow. Flora, do you agree? Thank you. So today I'm in a part of the house that's between the livable part and the Maison de Maitre. Um, with this, uh, all this insulation, actually it's above a finished floor, um, and a room which has windows and lights, um, but this is above the kitchen, and over there it will be above what we're using as the living room. Um, we go through to this, which is above the sort of the in-between part of the house, um, I think at some point somebody was using this as a bedroom it's got one of the the light pull well it's not a pull switch it's a a switch a clicker switch on a very old fabric cord that um has seen much much better days the so it's a room that has a window has power was ceiling was done it's actually got um a few hooks in here um so i don't know if it was used as a changing room or a bedroom at some point in its past it's just an empty bit of attic space anyway the reason i'm in here today is because this wall here if i was to go straight through that wall i would be um in the top half of the kitchen in the Maison de Maitre. And um, at about that height is the floor. 
and above there obviously the the house goes up um that's just a view of this attic space going up um so there is a wall now to get the power to the kitchen light i'm going through the floor void um at the moment i can see some ancient wires that go to somewhere that i that, that don't appear here so they're all buried in the plaster work um and rather than me channeling out all the plaster work um, a much quicker and easier solution to get that light wired in will be to drill through the wall here hopefully at the right height to get into the floor void in the between the kitchen and the bedroom above it where I can then get the wire going straight through to the point where the kitchen light comes down. I'm going to start the hole with these 600 mil drill bits. It may not be long enough. I may need to go and get my meter long drill bits. Um, now, obviously the drill diameter is larger than I would need for a cable. Part of the French electric, electric regulations is that cables passing through walls have to go through um, a ducting. Um, so it's like a, a flexible plastic sheath that uh, the cables pass through so it needs to be big enough to take that um so there you are that's what i'm going to start doing now so while mum and dad butcher are over in france me and nick are probably going to be doing the bulk of the driving whilst they're here so whilst it's a lovely day it's time to clean out both of the cars which are full of sand and rubbish and bits and pieces so that's my job for the afternoon the other thing to say about this room is that at some point they obviously had a, a lot of leaks because this part of the house uh, on top of those wooden balls there uh, there is a profile sheeting which is a waterproof uh, barrier um, which is formed in a shape to to take the uh canal roman canal tiles um so they had it re-roofed at some point obviously it was leaking badly um whether it's down to just that leaking in here or uh woodworm or a combination of the two some of the floorboards are past their best i've just put my foot through um through that one so this is the back of nick's car and all of the mess left over from new year's day on the beach and I very much doubt that my in-laws would like to sit on that. Mm. All right, I'll go and see if I'm through at the other side. With the dogs not liking the hoover, I've managed to shut them in the house for the majority of this. Hopefully. So this is the light fitting in the kitchen that I'm trying to get a cable to. Uh, the good news is, is that I haven't come straight through the plaster work of the um, quite decorative um, coving pieces. Car one, interior clean. Car two, interior two clean. Woo. Love it when you find things under the seats. <laughs> so this is a room above the kitchen. Conveniently, somebody had previously cut the floorboards, which were therefore easy to remove. Um, you can see cables from one era there, cables from another era there, all of which are um broken knackered unsafe not working anyway and going to unknown destinations um so i was trying to get the floor void along here and get the wire through the wall and i think i know what i've just done i think i've come a little too high in fact yes you can see, actually, I'm about, hmm, 
about 100 mil higher up than I wanted to be with that hole. This bit of wall. Ah, now I'm That's more solid. Yay. And I'm relatively confident that that is through where I need it to be. And there we go, two wonderfully clean cars ready to transport the in-laws around in. Daughter-in-law points, yeah. Do you have all the hot water bottles? Are they nice? You're good, Flora. All right, back in the room above the kitchen. Um, hopefully, we will see the wires are come through. And there they are. Hooray! Look what I've got. Excellent. All right. There's some holes through to the top of that plaster ceiling rose downstairs. What I think I will do is cut the wires that are here, um, pull through the fittings that are downstairs and just pull this, or push this through from here. So, Right, go downstairs. You can see up there where I need to get to. Luckily, I thought about this and got myself a ladder that will let me get up there, which is quite handy, isn't it? This plaster ceiling though is because it is beautiful. Right, that's fairly simple. Right, back upstairs. So, just cleared out some cable that was stuck in the hole. That is through the ceiling. Uh, guess what? <laughs> Back downstairs. I hope poking through the ceiling is that white cable. Right, so that's the wire from there to the in-betweeny house. Just when we, what I'll do in the in-betweeny house is fit this junction box um, because in there, I'll show you the system that I'm gonna be using for the switches. This morning I'm off to somewhere new. I'm off to go and get my hair cut for the first time in months and months. I'm quite excited as I've been recommended uh, a hairdresser who's English. 
so it's a bit of a trek it's about half an hour 40 minute drive away and i believe it's near a place called shizu if i'm even saying that right so uh i will let you know what the outcome is it's very exciting and it's going to a new place who asagu asagu um anyway they are kinetic wall switches so it works wirelessly you have a switch and that's the kitty that does the hard work you pair the two together um and then this is the switch there's no batteries it's never gonna you're never gonna uh, run out of batteries and there's any changing every time you press the button there every time you press it it creates enough energy to send the signal to the receiver which switches the wires on or off and therefore the light will be on or off um, you can pair multiple multiple switches to the one light or one light can do sorry one switch can do multiple lights um, so it's quite a flexible thing you can uh, so you can have these you can have eight switches i don't know if you can but you can have certainly multiple switches uh, working the same light. So ideal for the hallway where we've got the beautiful wallpaper. I don't want to disturb that in any way, but it would be nice to have a light. Well, here we go. This is the solution. We have a light switch. We can have one by every door in and out of the hallway. Everyone can turn the lights on or off. Easy as that. Anyway, all this chat isn't getting it fitted. I'm going to go next door, put this in the junction box with some connectors um, and then work out what to do next. After an hour and a half of, of being at the new hairdresser, I have cut hair and I'm going back again in a few weeks to have the colour sorted out. Um, yeah, I'm really quite chuffed. Well, that all went wrong. I just was poking the wire down through the ceiling. And that was fine. That was no problem. Um, all the wires from this, this um, consumer unit go elsewhere. Now, I've shown you this consumer unit and shown you quite how ancient it is. Um, there's no disjunctor which is a safety disconnect device however that's not to say the house is not without one because this here is the main energy suppliers disjunctor uh, which is a, the trip the, the safety thing so if there's real bad problems in the house that will trip out before it blows up the rest of the network for everyone else in the road. Um, on this disjunctor, there is a red button which disconnects the electric supply to the house and a white button which reconnects the electric supply to the house. So I thought, well, if I'm going to be putting cables to the consumer unit, I need to turn the power off. So I pressed the red button and the power went off. And I thought, oh, that was easy. Let's turn it back on again. And I pressed the white button. Nothing. Um, it's got these tabs on it, which are there to prevent people like me opening it up and having a look and doing anything that we shouldn't be doing. Um, I've tried restarting it with all the switches off. So there's no load, all the upstairs lights off as well, which um, we know there isn't a switch for, but I turned everything off. And it didn't start up again. So, um, well, I've been on the phone to the 
I found an electrician's number first um, and I rang him and he said, uh, but if it's old, it may well be that the, this disjuncture, um, leave it five minutes and it might just come on by itself. And if it doesn't, get on the phone to the energy supplier. And so it didn't come on after five minutes or after half an hour or after 45 minutes. So I was on the phone to them. I've uh, got through to an emergency breakdown number. And so she's going to uh, get to an engineer out this afternoon. Um, so whilst Nick is with the EDF man uh, trying to sort out the electrics, me and the dogs are sat in the bedroom in the dark kind of just really waiting for the power to come on. It's a bit boring. <laughs> so the uh, electrical engineers have just arrived. I've explained to them what the problem is and they're going to uh, swap it over. The whole brigade has arrived. I think you may have to go up and do something up the top. I'm not sure. The electric is finally back on and it's time to get ready or start getting ready for the arrival of mother and father butcher Ooh. well that only took about a quarter of an hour for them to do we've now got a shiny new disjuncteur uh, when the men came they uh, opened that box which has got four enormous fuses each about the size of my finger and uh, I think one for each of the three phases, probably and one for neutral. And that's all that the supply has here in France. You don't get a, an earth from the energy company. Um, each house has to have its own earth wire. In fact, that's where uh, some of ours goes out there. So oh, that was a bit of excitement that I haven't planned on for today. I spoke maybe a little bit too soon. The electric is now back off again. I can't really hoover in the dark. After being reliably told that I could hoover till my heart's content, the power went back off. It's not a problem, but I can't hoover, I can't wash, I can't put the washing machine on, I can't put the dishwasher on. So, what I've decided to come in here and do is just neaten up the sausage factory area, which has become a little bit of a dumping ground over the last few weeks. It's not that we'll be spending a lot of time in here as a family because it's cold and there's not really a lot in here. It's more for storage, but it's nice to be able to walk through it and see that it's not just a dumping ground for crap. There we have it. It's just a temporary set up for now but um i want to make sure it works and then i can go about making everything a bit more permanent in the future when i do more wiring um but this is really just a check that these new switches will work through the wall and if they don't then um plan b um, this part has to remain accessible because you've got the button to press to, it's all upside down, but that doesn't matter, um, to pair it with the, uh, the switch. So what I need to do now is go through, put a light fitting onto the kitchen wire, and then I can turn everything on. Hopefully pair it and hopefully it will work. And yes, I am wearing pyjama bottoms. Well, that's a bit better. At least the table's a bit clearer now. It's actually quite hard to do this in the dark. The good news is, apparently I now have power back for the duration. Unless he blows himself up and then apparently the power goes off. Currently, there's a little bit of something in me that wants the power to go off because he's having one of those moments where he's really annoying me, where I want to try and clean the house ready for tomorrow. And he's walking in and out constantly, going from room to room. Look, look, just been, just been outside. Now walking inside, not removing shoes.
So there's only one real thing to do whilst I'm waiting for him to finish. Cheers! Yeah, Flora! So the light fitting I put up there will in due course become one of our bathroom light fittings with lots of sparkly bits of glass on there, but I'm not putting those on with the amount of dust that we'll have to clean off one day. And it's the only modern light fitting we've got. I don't want to put up one of the ancient ones and blow the house up because it's so old. So I put up the new light fitting. I've wired it in. And I've given Claire the controller. As you can see, she's not wired into anything. When I give the word, would you like to click your button? Three, two, one. Ooh, it works. That's a, oh, a, voice, a, a voice of complete surprise that <laughs> your husband has wired in a light. Let me turn it off again. Right, so one way is on and the other way is off. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> You've got to do a very good job of that. So turn it off. Ah, oh, wow. Okay, I got it now. Yeah? So, up for on and oh, down for off. Well, it depends. Well, it depends different. which way you put it up, doesn't it? Ooh. Hours of entertainment in seas. <laughs> Well done. It's all very well and good. Your mother's coming tomorrow. So now it's tidying up time. I get it. <laughs> Any positive words to say? It's lovely. It's really lovely. I'm really proud of you. You've not blown yourself up. Well done. Okay. Let's clean. When the sun keeps shining, he can see different smears and I keep pointing them out to him. So helpful, I'm glad this is a team effort. But it is, I'm recording. I did the work, new video in point. Yep, it's called marriage. That is now so clear that I'm gonna walk into it. What about that bit up there? Oh that's, my God. That's greasy, look. You're not allowed to walk on any of the hard surfaces in the house because I've mopped them. But you haven't mopped in here. I've not mopped in here, no. But you're not allowed to go to the toilet. Oh, I wish you told me that a little while ago. If you want to walk on the mopped surfaces, you're not allowed to. You must fly. <laughs> <laughs> So after some nagging, some rowing, some cleaning, it's finally clean and ready. And even with the kitchen being 2,000 years old and you know, the wallpaper not really being my taste and stuff, you've got to admit, it is, it is clean. You're not allowed to walk on the mop floor, you have to levitate. And the other thing that you've kind of got to remember is, is that we are renovating the house next door, you know. So there will be dust, there will be dirt, and it won't always be perfect. Oh, I've just been and done my final shot before the in-laws arrived, and uh, I just looked at my car. I only washed it two days ago, but what's the point? <laughs> so we now have how long left to go? <laughs> well we've got we've got another hour yeah I think another hour now they went the wrong way a bit so cheers mine has vodka in <sighs> they're just on their way they stopped a man Stop to help them, as you do with elderly people.
I've come down to the cellar and this is where we keep the more special bottles of wines that we own and I've specifically come down here for this bottle here. Not just any bottle of wine, this is something a little bit special that you don't necessarily find every day. This evening as a treat from my father-in-law I have been on the internet and I bought a film that I watched many years ago called Bottle Shock. Bottle Shock is a film about a very famous wine tasting that was held in Paris in the 70s called The Judgment of Paris. And The Judgment of Paris was basically um, a competition between France and America and the wines that they both produce because nobody thought that there could be any wines that were superior to French wines. So they pitched uh, Bordeaux Reds against uh, Californian Cab Sabs and they pitched uh, French Whites against Californian Whites, particularly Chardonnays. Um, my employer who travels the world, um, was in America last year and I was chatting away and I very kindly said, do you think that you could bring me back a bottle of wine? Because I've also always wanted to try this wine. So this, this is a bottle of Chateau Montalena Chardonnay. It's uh, a 2019, it's not a 1976 bottle that won the Judgment of Paris, but it is from the same wine house that actually won the Judgment of Paris on the white grapes, the Chardonnay. Now, I don't think that my father-in-law is necessarily a lover of Chardonnay, but I thought it was quite a nice thing to do. So I'm gonna go chill this and then we'll wait and see how it's received this evening. so far. Um, today's Wine of the Week is a little bit different. We've just come from our cinema room back into the main uh, habitable, habitable part of the house, having watched a film called Bottle Shock. As a surprise for everybody, Claire had sourced a bottle of the wine, which is Chateau Montalena which is probably back to front there on the camera, but... I did do a little video of pulling it out of the cellar this morning to ah. start chilling it. <laughs> um, and, well, we've opened it and had a, had a taste and... Well, Dad, what do you think? It's a very distinctive Chardonnay. I have to be um, honest with you that uh, I, in some ways, belong to the ABC can which as you know is anything but chardonnay but this is a very attractive chardonnay and very distinctive it has a very interesting notes and i've really been thinking about it while i've been watching the film and if you have a chance to watch the film enjoy it it's a good room um, but if you can get hold of a bottle of this you'll be very lucky indeed and we're very fortunate to have been able to share this bottle not necessarily not exactly the 1973 vintage but still <laughs> a, a very good year and, and very pleasant this is the 2019 version which uh, is going down very nicely it is yes <laughs> Sorry 
way there as well, so now I've got one So, cheers! Cheers and uh, cheers. Yeah, thanks for watching again. If you've liked this week's episode, click the like button. If you're new to this and you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button. And, uh, well. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or on our website at www.thexpatbutchers.com. So until next week, cheers! cheers.